A new $100 billion AI chip effort shows how much the battle for chips is going to define business in the coming years. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. There has been a lot of scuttlebutt in the news around AI chip efforts. OpenAI's Sam Altman, of course, has recently redefined the term ambition with his interest in exploring a $5 to $7 trillion initiative to build a network of chip fabrication plants around the world, but also with a focus on the United States. Perhaps in the realm of a little bit more realistic, if still intensely ambitious, Bloomberg reports that SoftBank's Masayoshi Son is exploring a $100 billion AI chip project. Now, the ups and downs of SoftBank are, of course, at this point legendary, but they are certainly currently on an upswing, which has been largely driven by their 90% share of ARM holdings, the AI chip designer, which has seen enormous stock price increases this year. Bloomberg writes that this new $100 billion chip venture would complement ARM and is codenamed Izanagi. Apparently, one of the scenarios that SoftBank is imagining would see them putting in about $30 billion, with another $70 billion coming from institutions in the Middle East. At the moment, SoftBank has around $41 billion in cash and cash equivalents on hand, which would mean that this would represent a major part of their liquid assets being invested into this new project. Over the last 10 trading days, as ARM has increased by more than 80% in the markets, SoftBank shares have gained about 30%, and after this news broke, SoftBank stock was up another 3%. Now, at the moment, a $100 billion chip project would represent a little less than a fifth of the global semiconductor market, but I don't think anyone on the planet, especially not people who are paying attention to AI, thinks that that market is going to stay this size for very long. Now, moving on from chips into the realm of data, last year in April, Reddit started to posture like it was going to take a more harsh stance towards companies that were scraping its data to train their AI models. Now, around 10 months later, they have actually signed a $60 million annual deal with an as-yet unnamed AI company to allow that company to train on Reddit content. One thing we don't know is whether the deal is exclusive, but the contact who gave Bloomberg the news speculated that more likely was that the contract would serve as a model for future agreements with other AI companies as well. Now, from a Reddit standpoint, this is something they wanted to get done before a potential IPO, which could happen as soon as next month. And obviously, from the larger AI industry standpoint, any of these types of agreements right now, as legal battles around copyright and fair use are being fought in the courts, are going to be influential in shaping how the industry moves next when it comes to proprietary sources of data. Next, we have a little bit of follow-up around Sora. If you've been listening to my shows recently, you will know that Sora has been the major topic of conversation over the last few days, really ever since OpenAI announced it, but some people aren't quite as impressed. Jan LeCun, who is of course the head of Meta's AI department, said that if OpenAI's goal is really to simulate the world, that Sora's approach is ill-suited for that. He said, modeling the world for action by generating pixels is wasteful and doomed to failure. Writes the decoder, there has been a historic debate about the merits of generative versus discriminative classification methods, with generative methods considered more difficult and less effective. LeCun believes that generative models for sensory inputs will fail because it is too difficult to deal with the prediction uncertainty of high-dimensional continuous sensory inputs. Basically, he's saying that while generative models work for text because there are a finite number of symbols, uncertainty is easier dealt with in that context. Sensory input, on the other hand, just is a huge additional level of complexity. It will perhaps surprise you not at all to know that Lacoon and Meta have their own approach to this problem, which they're calling the Video Join Embedding Predictive Architecture, or VJPA. Again, from the decoder, the model predicts complex interactions and interprets them by adding hidden parts of video to convey the dynamics of objects and interactions to the AI. VJPA focuses on predictions in a broader conceptual space, similar to human cognitive image processing. This architecture allows VJPA to adapt to different tasks by adding a small task-specific layer, rather than retraining the entire model. Elon Musk also had some words for OpenAI's Sora, saying on Twitter, where Tesla video generation exceeds OpenAI is that it predicts extremely accurate physics. That is essential for self-driving. So again, what we have here is another critique, not of Sora's ability necessarily to make incredible looking videos, but instead how accurate it truly is as a representation of the real world and its ability to be a world simulator, which seems of course to be the ultimate goal in OpenAI's pursuit of AGI. Now, staying on the theme of Elon, or at least electric vehicles for just a minute, a Chinese EV maker, Xpeng, has announced that it would hire 4,000 people and invest millions in AI in a strategy that is contrasting with other Chinese and global EV makers who are, instead of investing more, currently racing to cut their own costs. Microsoft continues its streak of investing in European countries, announcing an AI infrastructure bid in Spain, coming along with a $2.1 billion investment. This, of course, follows our recent announcement of a $3.45 billion AI-focused investment in Germany and will be centered around AI and cloud infrastructure. 
Lastly today, one that I'm only just starting to see talked about on Twitter a little bit, the University of Pennsylvania's Penn Engineering Today wrote a blog post at the end of last week called New Chip Opens Door to AI Computing at Light Speed. The piece begins, Penn engineers have developed a new chip that uses light waves rather than electricity to perform the complex math essential to training AI. The chip has the potential to radically accelerate the processing speed of computers while also reducing their energy consumption. They call this a silicon photonic or SIPH chip, and it's based on recent research around manipulating materials at the nanoscale to perform mathematical computations using light. And so we close this brief basically where we began with the continued focus on AI chips. In many ways, these two bookending stories represent the spectrum of what we're seeing right now. On the one hand, people trying to solve the compute access problem by throwing money at it and just building out more infrastructure, versus on the other hand, thinking in fundamentally new ways about the actual underlying technology itself. It is almost for certain that as the AI revolution continues, we will see immense developments in both ends of the spectrum. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI breakdown.